All right, so um, I want to make a couple of uh, declarations that I'm black man. If you don't know that, you either got the mask over your eyes or, or something's going on. Uh, I'm unapologetic, unapologetically a black man, right? As well as a Christian. Um, so I've learned I'm old enough to not try to get you to really uh, uh, move to my belief because in a room with the size like this and in a university or a Tabor College, there's people that fall on the spectrum of believers who are, there's people that fall on the spectrum of unbelievers who are, and then there's some people that fall on the spectrum of, uh, of uh, just, they, they, they just undecided right now. And that's cool. I believe that the gospel got a message for everybody wherever you fall. And whether you're a believer, unbeliever, or skeptic, God still loves you. Does that make sense? And that's what you need to understand. So I'm going to show you a few historical characters because God created me to be who I am. I have to uh, be able to enlighten you, especially on this wonderful, wonderful uh, month of, of Black History. Does anybody know why Black History Month is celebrated in the month of February? Nope. I didn't either. I didn't either. This man grooving back here in the back. He got his, he got his music on or something. All right. So, so anybody heard of Carter G. Woodson? Raise your hand if you've heard of the name Carter G. Woodson. That's really, that. so I was raised as a Christian in my home more than I was raised as understanding my culture, right? And so it kind of it made me great and I, was, I loved God, but, but my mother just never knew her history enough to, to also give me pride in who I was. So I'm gonna educate you on a, on a couple of people and so that you can do your own research and findings. So this guy right here, is Carter G. Woodson, born December 19th, same, same date as my, as my son, in 1875, died April the 3rd, 1950. He actually earned his doctorate from Harvard University. Both of his parents were slaves, but he wanted, he wanted to make sure that everybody knew the contributions of African American, I was about to say amen, uh, uh, in history. And so one of the things that he did, he first started Negro, you know, that used to be a term acceptable, Negro History Week, to really make, make sure that, that if you were, if you shared the same color as I did, you took pride in that and didn't feel shame because of what was going on in the current culture during that time. Oh. All right, so Carter G. Woodson, the reason why Black History Month is celebrated in February is because of Abraham Lincoln's birthday. Say Abraham Lincoln's birthday and a gentleman, y'all think I'm gonna fall off, don't you? And by the name, I know you was thinking that, Carter, and, and by the name of Frederick Douglass, both of these gentlemen's birthday was in the month of February, so that's why February was chosen. I used to think, man, they gave us the, the, the shortest month. That's why, you know, and I used to, I used to like uh, uh, build my belief on that, but, but when you don't know history, you make, you know, you, you kind of come up with these silly, silly thoughts about it. But that was the reason to honor President Abraham Lincoln and to also recognize a man by the name of Frederick Douglass. Carter G. Wilson. So next guy, do you know who this is? Say yes or no. I need y'all to talk back. I know you got your mask on. Have any of you sharpened your pencils like within the last day or two? <laughs> Because now they got, my bad. I'm 46, so I'm a little older than y'all, believe it or not. So back in the day, they had handheld pencil sharpeners. Does that make sense? And so this guy is, his name is John L. Love. So he created the hand cranking pencil sharpener. So, so that led, of course, to the mechanical pencil sharpener. Now you don't even need it. You can just do what? Click, click. Click, click. Y'all made me feel real old when y'all were like, nah, I've never sharpened a picture, homie. It's just not me. All right. So who is this? Say his name. John. John Love. Who was the first guy? Carter G. Woodson. Carter G. Woodson, known as the father of Black History Month. All right. Last one. Last guy. And then I want you to really, as I, as I say these names, this guy is pretty cool. He was an inventor. And he invented two things that you see on a daily basis. And I know I ain't too old for 
Did you know about the three-way traffic light that you go through every day? This man, this man invented that. All right, and he also created the gas mask. So what firemen use every day to ensure that they're safe. But guess what? If you never know history, if you never study history, you lose the value of what these contributors made to our culture. Huh? Does that make sense? All right, did anybody know that he created the three-way traffic light? Good, good. One out of how many? 200 and some odd people. Why am I sharing this? Is it just because black history? I'm a, I personally, I believe that history should not have a month. Carter G. Wilson didn't believe that that should last for as long as it has because he felt like if education, you know, rose to the level it should, that everybody would be recognized as they should. But we know that ain't the way it is. Today in our time is rough, y'all. Would y'all agree? A lot of stuff going on. Chiefs lost. I was, I was rooting for them, too. But they wasn't doing nothing yesterday. Wasn't doing nothing. I felt like, I felt, never mind, I'm getting off on a tantrum. Just disregard that. We live in a rough time. People storming the Capitol, right? And I, I don't care, you know, I'm not, I'm not, this ain't about political, but people are doing things because they feel it is right to do. There's reasons, there's a lot of hurt, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of things that drive us to, to doing these things that we do. Why am I a Christian? Because I am tired of the way the world is right now. I'm a little tired. I'm a little angry. I ain't going to lie. I get a little upset about the things that I see and the things that are going on. But the thing that draws me, I experienced something when I was in high school, literally a senior in high school. I rode a bus back to my house. I was in like a, uh, um, what you call it, a Votech. You know, you can go to Votech when you're a junior, senior in high school. And I was the only black man on the bus that would go back to my high school. It was like a transfer bus that I had to get on. The people that were on the bus was from Sisterville, West Virginia. That's where I'm from. All right, I'm from West Virginia. They were from Sisterville, known to be like the racist group. So I, they, this is what they would say to me. I got the tree. I got the noose. And I got the nigga. They would say that to me when I was a senior in high school. And then the bus driver who I, I was looking for somebody to just, just kind of come here and give me some, you know, make me feel somewhat safe. But when I see the bus driver even smiling, how do you think I felt? Talk to me, y'all. How do you think I felt? Horrible. So my voice is cracking. <laughs> Angry. What else? Talk to me, y'all. This is, I'm, this is an educational institution. Y'all got to talk to me like y'all like y'all adults and like you can say something. Talk to me. How's that I feel? Unappreciated. What was somebody else said here? Alone. What was that up there at the top? Brave. Oh, afraid. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I wanted somebody, I wanted somebody to come in and like make me feel comfort in this, in this time. And I had a thought that I, I, I need to do what to these people that are hating me? Fight back, but I wasn't going to do that, brother, too smart. All right, I was too smart. Got my tail whooped on there. So I was in this state of confusion because of everything that was going on on this bus at that time. But my mother raised me as a man of God. And she said, Robert, you cannot hate, you cannot hate a whole group of people because of the ignorance of a few. That's what my mother said. You can't hate a whole group of people because of the ignorance of a few. And in our day and time, we are being, we are being coached to divide. We are being coached to hate. We are being coached to, uh, uh, to not come together. Does that make sense? But my mother said you cannot hate a whole group of people. But I had reason to hate. I had reason to put my hands on people. I had reason for that. But it, it would go against my values that my mother raised me What? Oops. I'm glad that wasn't open. And so my mother raised me to love regardless of the hate that was given to me. It's a little backwards. It feels, it feels like I'm a punk when I do that. When you call me outside of my name and I don't retaliate, that makes me feel weak. 
When, when you say that I'm something that I'm not, it makes me feel this is why in my home we don't use that N word. We, 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 we shut it down. You can't do that in my, because I understand history now. And so when you understand history, words that are culturally accepted becomes nullified when you know who you are. Does that make sense? So I talk to you in this way because I want to be real with y'all. Can I be real? How many of y'all have been around phony folk too long? And they smile in your face and they say they're this or that. Even sometimes the Christians, I'm a Christian, but yet they're doing the same thing that, that, that somebody that don't care about Christianity do. And it's confusing. It's very confusing. Me being a black man, the same thing. I get upset when, 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 I'm re- when you're ready to fight somebody that calls you the N-word, but yet we continue to perpetuate the word. It's confusing to me. Does that make sense? And it's confusing to you. And I understand the term of endearment and all of that. But I want to go back to why I'm here. I say that because this is where I, I, I got to be real with y'all. And if I came here just being Bible, 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 Jesus, 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 you need to love him, love him, love him, and walked out, it would have not even at all touched what's going on in our culture, huh? You're in this educational institution. Some of you are here for various reasons. You may have come here on a sports scholarship. Congratulations on that if you rolled up here on that. Use that platform to become as educated as you can. When I taught as an adjunct professor at at an institution, Brothers came and they saw me. They was like, they saw another black man teaching, and they was like, "What's up, bro?" And they saw me, and they and I was like, "Listen, you can call me Mr. Cunningham, or you can call me Mr. C, but in this environment, I'm not your bro." One of them fell out of the class. The other one gained my respect. He got a C out of the class, but he gained my respect because he began to to invest in his education because of who he was. Man, I want to come out there so bad, man. Ryan, I feel restricted, doc. Uh, yeah, I, man, I'm a uh, pandemic. I don't blame you, man. I blame this. All right. So what, 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 do, what does it mean to be a Christian in our day and time? Talk to me. Somebody talk to me that may be a believer, even if you're an unbeliever. What does it mean to you to be a Christian in this day and time? I need, I need a voice because they're going to shut me down here in a minute. You got to love. Man, is it easy? Heck no. How many of y'all just wanted to slap somebody in the last five days? Be real. Raise them hands real high. You know you 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 wanted to put your hands on this man or this woman so bad because of whatever they did or whatever they said. I I get it too. How many of you did it? No, don't keep. (laughs) Don't do it. Don't do it. Please. I'm sorry, because the receiver of those are not too happy right now. All right? So you got to love. What else does it mean to be a Christian? Talk. I need voices, man. I can't. I'm not. What? All for hope. I love that. Who said that? Raise your hand because I can't see. Right in the back. Thank you. What else does it mean? So love, hope, patience. What else? Peace. You know, and I love that word, but I read the Bible, and sometimes my belief ain't going to cause peace. Y'all feel me? If you are, now I'm I'm not talking to the ones who who believe the way I do. If you are a Christian, you know, the theme is ignite. You got to get out of this frame of mind that you don't want to offend nobody. Get out of that frame of mind because simply because you say you believe in one God and there's only one way to God, then you are already offensive. Get out of this frame of mind to thinking that you're going to get everybody to believe the way you believe. Because even when Jesus walked this earth, guess what? There were still people that didn't believe him. He would, man, with their hands be like this and be like, what was up? Ah! People were like, nah, that ain't real. Blind eyes, and he spit pops out. And they can see, and they still didn't believe. So if all of this stuff was going on with Jesus, is there, do you think, do you think they're going to believe him just because you believe? It is dumb to the world, your faith. It doesn't make sense because it's countercultural and it's supposed to be. Don't you know that this is not what the world's going to be? 
in the long run. Ooh, and I'm so excited. Ain't it going to be awesome, man, that I don't, when I approach you, I don't got to wonder what your beliefs or what your hate is or what your thought of me is, but I'll come to you simply on the basis of, I know that you know God. And regardless of where you are, man, that unifies us. At a brook, how much time I got? All right, thank you. He said two, he didn't say two minutes. Uh, there was a brother that was from Nigeria and he was talking in front of a college, a college institution that I went to. And he said, you know what? We all brothers and sisters. I was like, nah, we ain't. I said, I'm looking around, <laughs> I'm looking around the room. He said, no, we all blood. We, we related by blood. I was like, no, we ain't. Cause you ain't, I mean, come, come up here stand real quick. Come on, man. Don't be scared. Come on. You, you, you know I'm looking at you. There ain't nobody beside him. I'm like this. <laughs> Come right here. Come right here with me. Right here. Come right here. Stay six feet apart. Double arm interval. Double arm. Double arm. Move over some more. Put your arm up. Put your arm up. Put your arm up. Too close. Put your arm. Move over. Put your arm up, man. Move over. Move over. Too close. Thank you. Now, if I were to ask you who my relative was, from these two individuals up here, don't base it on philosophical, well, you know, deeply, if I were to think deep about it, then, you know, don't, don't be so, so high educated, you become dumb, all right? Who would be my relative? Talk to me, y'all. What's your name? Kobe. Kobe? Coley. Oh, Kobe. Got it. Got it. What's your name, young man? Noah. Kobe and Noah. Did I get it right? Who would, who would be my family member? Just by sight. Say his name like you love him. Uh, <laughs> Kobe would be my brother, right? Who, who would not be my family based upon what you see up here? Say his name like you love Noah. Noah. Yes. All right. So this man going to tell me that we all blood relatives. I'm like, heck no, because my brother over here, this ain't my brother right here. Because he don't look like me. He don't act like me. He wouldn't, you know, he, I, he, he wasn't at the barbecue last week. All right. But then he went and educated me. He said, no, we are all brothers and sisters by the blood of Christ. And it kind of knocked me off of my feet a little bit because I never thought about that. That I could be so different. I can look so different, but if, I, but, if I, but if I can unify on one purpose, is that God is love, God is hope, God is, God is uh, um, all of these other, other, other ways you described him, then I am unified by blood. And I'm telling you right now, I understand why there is hate. I get it, man. Y'all get it too, right? Shake y'all's head like y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all understand why there's hate. There's been some things been done to you, things that you've seen, things that you've experienced that make you really want to just not even entertain the thought of getting to know somebody that may look like this one or that one. But if you are godly, and if you know, and if you, and if you, and if you say you are a Christian, then these differences, they, they cannot separate you does that make sense? I get it. I could hate every one of them jokers on that bus for calling me what they did. It hurt. It was embarrassing. It made me afraid. It made me want to not only not only did I feel alone, as one of you said, but I didn't want to I didn't even want to be around anybody that looked like that for a little while. And it makes sense. Some of you, some of you who are white here, you've experienced something from brothers that, you know, make you make it justifies your hate. It would. And I'm sorry. I, I want to apologize whether you're black, white or anything in between. I want to apologize for those things that have occurred to you that have solidified your hate. Because it's real. And I'm not I'm not dampening your story because that mess is real. Huh? Y'all stay up here with me because I feel support. And, I, and I'm, I can't get out there, but y'all come up here. I met a guy, and then I'm and get ready to close because I only got about four minutes left. I worked at a place called St. Francis Academy. Y'all heard of that? 
place where they have kids that's been, a, you know, they, they get taken out of their home because of abuses that have happened to them. And I was doing the end of the night comp line, which is like the, the chapel at the end of the night. And I was praying this guy, this guy got in my face, He's a white young man, nose to nose. And if any of y'all know me, whenever you get that close to me, have you ever had somebody angry at you and then put their nose on your nose? Oh, I'm telling you. I need some people that like got some fighting spirits in here. What, what, what did you just want to do right when, you, when I said that? Huh? Oh, I didn't think about that, but that would have been good. For real. I wanted to hear, but yeah, I didn't. But, but there were some other things going on in my mind. But God said, Rob, step back. He got in my nose. He got nose to t- his nose mm, touched my nose. And he said, I serve the God of Thor. That's what he said. And I'm like, I got two decisions. I'm either going to wear them out or I'm going to step back. And it was only the spirit of God that was in me that made me step back. And then I went up to that young man's room after he was calm. He sat down. I stepped back, and guess what? He calmed because I didn't react to his reaction because, he, you know, I, didn't, I, I moved back. He sat down. I learned something from that. Went to his room and asked him, hey, man, why? he was a skinhead. I said, why, tell, me, tell me your story, man. He's like, man, listen, I went to a rally, and I've, ne- I've never felt accepted by anyone. Never. He said, but these brothers surrounded me. And they, and, they, and they made me feel so welcomed that I became what I became. And guess what? what? Did you think I got mad at him from that point on? Why? Talk to me, y'all. Why? I understood his pain. What else? Don't be afraid to talk. Come on, y'all. What, what else? Why, why did I not get it? Why could I not be mad at this young man? I understood his pain. What else? He didn't get accepted by, not maybe, I don't know if it's Christians or not, but he definitely didn't get accepted by some group as he was accepted by this group. And so, so, he, so he, he believed that philosophy of, of life because of the love that he felt in that unification. Got me? A, a, a real, you know, but he, and, I, and, I, and I, although I didn't agree with him, guess what? I completely under. I completely understood where he came from. What if you as Christians, you would do that to the ones you think that don't know God at all? What if we took the stance of not secluding ourselves away from people who may do some things that may not, but, and I'm not saying go to where they go and do what they do, but what I'm saying is take some time to just talk, right? And it ain't all our responsibility, young men and women of God. You know, sometimes they ain't going to want to talk to you, and that's cool. But when you have the opportunity, take time to listen. Don't judge everybody by what they're doing, by how they're behaving. You don't know their story. And if you haven't taken time to get to know their story, then, then shame on you. Pray for them. The Bible says this. Thank you, young men. Let's give these two young men a hand. The Bible said, no, no, I said y'all can stay. Y'all, no, don't go. I felt, I felt the support leave real quick. The Bible says this. It's completely countercultural. Love those. Do good to those that despitefully use you. Backwards. Love your enemies. Backwards. That's backwards, right? I'm supposed to love you? Forget it, I'm coming out. I'm coming off stage. Sorry. I'm rebellious. For me to love you when you hate me shows that it ain't about me. It's about something higher. For me to talk to you and say, man, I just want to know why you feel, you know, let's show something higher, that, that you're valuable to me. You understand? The theme is to ignite. Don't you know that there is so much stuff to talk about that can, that can unify you guys? So I challenge you. 
I challenge those of you that, that seem to be the popular ones on campus. I challenge you to not find your popularity in your athleticism or maybe even in your, your financial state. But I challenge, you to, I challenge you to get out of your comfort zone and start some things that can unify on campus, socially distance. <laughs> I said, you, know, you gotta add that to everything you say. Because what can that do? Tabor is, is y'all are out in the middle of where? And it's, a lo- it's lonely. And you only got each other for <laughs> somebody. Somebody do me an air fist bump. Whoever said really, but you only got each other. You know what I'm saying? And in places like this, I know back in the day, I would have been doing a whole lot of stuff before God, smoking a lot, drinking a lot, partying a lot, sexing a lot, doing a whole lot of sexing, not sexting, because that wasn't back in my day. We ain't had that, you know. I'm talking about sex. <laughs> Y'all already know. God changed me. God changed me. God changed me, and I'm thankful for it. Don't laugh at me, Kobe. Don't laugh at me, man. I see you. Be like Noah. Noah, Noah trying to keep it together. He's trying to keep it together. All right. Uh, last thing. I love y'all. I got to end. If you remember one thing from this crazy message that I just gave, Love your enemies. Do good to those that despitefully use you. Remember that you're unified by the blood of Christ, even though you don't even look the same, you ain't from the same family. You that are, you that are leaders in the good and bad sense, do something. Start, start a movement on this campus, man. And I ain't saying try to get all the, all the students, but the ones that you have influence over, begin that dialogue about what can I do to make a difference on this campus. So when you leave, it's not just this, edu- this, this place just became just, it just is what it is. But when, you la- but when you leave, you can say that you left your imprint in this spot. Y'all feel me? All right, let's bow our heads and pray. God, I thank you for these young men, these young women. I thank you for my brother Kobe. I thank you for my brother Noah that came here to support me up here. Uh, God, uh, in this day and time, there can be some people out here, God, that have contemplated suicide. Uh, they are so lonely. Uh, they can be even in the crowd of people. Um, uh, but, but they feel like there's something missing out of their lives, God. You are the missing element. God, I'm praying, I'm, I'm, I'm desperately praying, God, that they reach out to you. That they reach out to you, God, in their point of loneliness, in their point of pain, Uh, There may be some people here that have been, uh, hmm, thank you, God, that have had some things done to them, even maybe on this campus, and they didn't ask for, and it was forced upon them. And they, and they, and they feel, um, they feel like they're, they're less than, they feel like, they feel like they have been used, and they feel like they have no value. But God, I'm, 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 I'm asking that you give them their value back and that you give them their hope of life back. And God, and you give them a voice to be vocal for the healing to begin, God. I thank you for these young men that are here because I am one of you. God, help us to not get our self-esteem by how many men we can beat up or how many women we can sleep with. But God, let us, let us get our self-esteem, God, by building community, by doing things with one another. For the strong young ladies that are here, and even those not so strong, God, I'm asking that they unify uh, and begin to have value and begin to respect themselves and not respect themselves just by the shape of their base <laughs> or the makeup on their face, but they begin to find value in the fact that You made them beautiful, and that's all they need to hear. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you.